RTX 3080 reviews were just released, and while it looks really fast, new leaks suggest the Big Navi could bring fierce competition. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So this morning I woke up and unsurprisingly my YouTube feed was just absolutely flooded with RTX 3080 reviews and while the performance looks pretty dang good especially at 4K, it maybe wasn't quite as impressive as some people were hoping and you know, that in combination with many of the new Big Navi leaks that have been showing up made me start to think that Big Navi might actually be a little bit more competitive than I originally thought. So before we go ahead and jump into those Big Navi leaks, let's quickly get a little bit more detail on the actual performance of the RTX 3080. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at two of the bar graphs that Hardware Unbox posted. You should, of course, watch their whole entire review as I'm leaving a ton of stuff out. But I'm going to go ahead and take a look at their 4K results when you compare the RTX 3080 to the 2080 Ti and the 1080 Ti to see just how fast it is. And when we go ahead and compare it to the 1080 Ti at 4K, it looks like that overall in all the games they tested, it's around 74% faster, which is a huge uplift even after two generations. And when we compare it to the 2080 Ti, it's 31% faster, which is actually pretty impressive, especially considering it has the 80 nomenclature and not the 80 Ti, even though it is basically a slightly cut down 80 Ti since it's based on the GA102 die just like most of their TI variants are based on the 102 die. But I know a lot of people out there might be a little bit disappointed because they were maybe expecting a little bit closer to 40% faster. And, you know, personally, I was thinking between 30 to 40% is probably where this would fall. And it looks like that's about right. And you know what? 31% faster for $700, that's really not that bad because we're dropping back $500 in terms of price point. We're getting more in line where the 1080 Ti type of cards should be priced, and we're still getting a fair generational jump. In fact, if we look at the 3080 from the 1080 Ti, it looks like year over year you're getting about a 37% jump, and the price really hasn't crept up, especially when you consider the fact that inflation does lead to higher prices. But with the RTX 3080 only coming in at 30 31% faster than the 2080 Ti at 4K, well I think that gives AMD a little bit more breathing room. So let's go ahead and take a look at those leaks to determine can AMD win, and even if they can't, are they just going to be the better choice? So if we take a look at the newest leaks of the benchmarks that have come out, you know, it looked like the big Navi chip that was being displayed was actually not even going to be as fast as a 2080 Ti, and so that got a lot of people, including me, very disappointed, but in the back of my mind I was wondering, is this actually biggest Navi? because it might not be. And new leaked pictures from Jay's Two Cents and Red Gaming Tech have me believing that, yeah, that probably was a cut down variant of Big Navi and not the biggest Navi that we've all been waiting for. So if we go ahead and take a look at the leaked images that they put out, which by the way, you should go ahead and watch their full videos. A link will be in the description below because of course I'm not covering everything that they talked about, but they did go ahead and show off two different GPUs shortly after AMD themselves showed off what we can only speculate is the 6900 XT and the images that they showed I found very interesting because it shows us a lot more than AMD showed themselves. And so if we take a look at that first GPU, it's clearly what they seem to believe and what I also believe is the 6900 XT or maybe they'll call it the 6800 XT. But in any case, it looks like it's going to be the biggest form of Navi. And this GPU has three fans and the actual design itself looks very, very nice. It looks like a huge improvement over the Radeon 7, which was just a brick. And I think it had like a thermal pad and just the whole design of it was kind of a mess. They were blocking off air vents. And you can see here in these photos that, you know, there's less blockage going on though at the back there, there is you know, not a whole lot of airflow as it looks like, at least for now, that they just don't have any holes cut out in the bracket, which I find very strange. But overall, the actual cooler looks like not only is it going to be much more effective, but it looks way, way nicer. I mean, that Radeon 7 GPU to me, I think it has to go down, and this is just my personal opinion, but I think it goes down in history as being one of the worst looking GPU designs I have ever seen. So this is a huge step up because believe it or not, although most of us, our biggest, most important important thing when we go to buy a GPU is how it performs and how quiet it is. A lot of people also buy GPUs based on their looks. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at that second GPU that was leaked. So in these images, you can see that it has a pretty similar design, but 
The difference here is that not only are there not three fans, it's just also a smaller cooler. So you have a two fan design, it's a smaller cooler, it has a, you know, a little bit different coloring, and this one looks to be a cut down version of the bigger GPU that you just looked at. Now whether or not it's Navi 21 cut down or if it's Navi 22, we have no idea. We don't know how many shaders are in these things. We don't even fully know the memory type of specifications here though. It seems like the bigger GPUs will be shipping with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 and what is most likely a 256-bit bus, which could be a problem. We'll get to that in just a second. But overall, this is the main image that makes me think that that newest leaked performance was probably a cut-down GPU. This was probably the GPU that was being benchmarked. And you know, that other GPU that you saw images of is probably gonna have much higher performance. And that does seem to be backed up by a different leak that came out quite a while ago from Hot Hardware, where supposedly on OpenVR, an unknown AMD GPU was able to beat the 2080 Ti by 17%. And on top of that, if I'm remembering correctly, Red Gaming Tech himself seems to believe that this biggest GPU and all these leaked images that we're seeing is going to have 80 compute units, which that would be pretty wild, but I keep seeing that rumor go around that supposedly 80 compute units could exist as their biggest GPU. So we'll have to wait and see if that actually happens, but it, I find that kind of strange because why would you put double the amount of compute units on your next GPU, but still only have it on a 256-bit bus? And it's not like they moved to GDDR6X, they're still on GDDR6, supposedly. So, you know, I'm not sure if they'd have enough bandwidth. And according to RGT, this is gonna be circumvented by the fact that it's gonna have an absolutely massive 128 megabytes of cache. Now, is that actually gonna be enough to get by the fact that the RTX 3080 has 760 gigabytes per second and this card would have 512. Well, that's yet to be seen. I have my doubts for sure. I find that to be a little bit odd. I, not only is that a lot of cash, but I'm not sure if that would even completely solve the issue, but maybe it's good enough to get them close enough that they don't quite need all that bandwidth and they're able to make an 80 compute unit GPU that has just a ton of performance. And if that's the case, if the price is right, which the price is extremely important, well then AMD could actually have the more desirable GPU because 16 gigabytes versus 10, and then the fact that you know maybe it's only on average 10 to 15% slower, but it's way cheaper, well, that's where they could really find success. So it's all gonna come down to their drivers, their feature support, and the price. That's what's in the end going to be the final deciding factors for a lot of people because they have a lot of things that they got to make up for. Not only were the drivers on release for the 5700 XT a little bit of a mess, but on top of that, they need to have feature support for stuff like DLSS. They need to have a competitor to that, which I've heard that they're working on. They also need to make sure that they have their ray tracing to be you know, good enough. It doesn't need to be as good as NVIDIA, but it needs to be good enough to run most modern games without massive performance hits. And on top of that, the price needs to be much lower. I know they've, I've heard rumors of $500 to $550, but realistically, if you can put a GPU that's slightly smaller inside the Xbox and sell the whole Xbox, which I get they're buying them on mass quantity, but if you can sell that whole Xbox for just 500 bucks, I don't think over $500 for just a GPU is really fair. I think you need to sell this GPU for under $500 if you really want to grab that market back and get people to really raise their fist for AMD and go root for you as the underdog. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But, you know, overall, I'm very excited to see what happens with Big Navi. And I think NVIDIA should be a little bit scared. And I think that's probably why they priced the RTX 3080 at $700 because they know that AMD could get very, very close depending on what happens. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the RTX 3080's performance and do you think that Big Navi has a chance of beating it or just being the better buy? I'd like to see what you have to say in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you wanna see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.